like actually we just went to a haunted forest so i'm still like kind of catching up here because okay. uh, we were wandering into the dark and it was pretty scary <laughs> but i love the whole like the whole mystery around the country uh except the fact that there's this beautiful culture great food and actually beautiful women not <laughs> to forget uh it's just the whole the mystery of the country i love it you know we filmed something, but it might be on my socials very soon. Wow. So <laughs> I'll check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did a little discovery in the forest, so stay tuned, stay tuned. I hear some people don't return after filming, so... Yeah, well, you're here, so... <laughs> yeah, I, this so might far, actually so not good. be me. It, this <laughs> might be, you know, somebody else. It's more like... Um, it's, it's kind of a, a thing when you make a song, it's... You have an idea in your head of what the video would look like. So I always use a team. I have a great team. Uh, usually I always produce everything, executive produce it. But there's always uh, another uh, director involved as well. Um, but I just, I think the music video is as important as the music itself, you know, because when you make a song, let's say Take Her Place, a lot of people thought that song was about cheating, but I made that song about you know about dogs for instance about the emotion of what it would be like to lose a dog and how much a dog can mean in your life and i think that's what i love about videos it really that's the last part of the puzzle of showing who you really are and i think a lot of a lot of artists are not that interested in it they're like let somebody else do it or uh, but for me when i make the song i usually already have the concept in my head and uh, yeah i just like for me that's how you make things full circle it's that and it's like even, it goes through the little details, right? Even the, like all the styling of the video would be done uh, by me, for instance, because it's, you need to see the same thing in the video as when you see someone perform on a stage or when you see him in an interview or, for me, it kind of just has to be me. And when it has to be you, it has to come from you. It's a basic yeah. fault of communication. That's what it is. It's like you're trying to tell something, but somebody might interpret it in their own way but the only thing I can do is try to explain it the way I see it, but it doesn't matter if somebody else sees it in a different way, that's fine for me. As long as it evokes emotion or it inspires them or it gets them thinking. And I try to do that during my shows as well. For me, it's not just about dancing, it's about sending people home with an idea or a thought or just a feeling in the gut and not just tired feet. I think a lot of the songs like are about something personal. Um, and a lot of it is about, you know, when I grew up, I didn't really have a, that much self-confidence. So now that I kind of find, you know, I found my way into who I can potentially be at my maximum, at my 100% dawn. Uh, you know, I started out as a 5% dawn. And then uh, as you, as life takes over, you kind of just start discovering what's, you know, what are the good things that I can do in life and what can I do for others and what can I make better about myself and then you gradually grow and your you know your battery gets fuller and fuller and for me uh, it's a search I think everybody can be their 100% version I'm actually not near 100% yet but um, it's really a search and I think a lot of people look at other people and they compare themselves to those people and then that's where you get demotivated or depressed and um, I think it's really really about trying to find you know the great things in your life and seek your talents and this has never been my dream you know to be interviewed by you or to, to perform on that stage I wasn't like oh shit I really want to be a DJ but I just randomly found out I was pretty good at it <laughs> so now I'm here and that's kind of what life is right you need to there's like a shit load of signs in the sky and coming from all kinds of directions and I'm not you know super floaty or spiritual but that's no denying that that there is more beyond this world and I happen to see those things and connect them. Well, for me, it's like I was just thinking, I wake up every day thinking what the point is of all this, what we're doing here, <laughs> you know? I think there's a lot, there are a lot of experiences you go through that are hurtful, you know, and it make you sad or insecure. Whether it's like in my case, losing my father or losing a dog or like, you know, or just, you know, somebody just hating on you and people just talking you down or which has happened most of my life before my breakthrough 
Nobody really believed in what I was doing. They all thought I was insane. Uh, and actually, it's funny because the the line between insanity and you know being successful is like this thin, you know. And I think a lot of people forget about that. And especially when you ridicule somebody who's trying to do something, you have to respect that, whether that person succeeds or not. It's already a success in my mind. And for me, I want to help those who who think alike because I I never had that in my life. I never. I never had somebody motivating me from the outside other than you know, my parents. Uh, my dad was my inspiration, but he traveled a lot. So it was kind of like a big fish situation. I came up with all these stories around my dad. We were all in these adventures. And um, so my imagination grew bigger and bigger. And I think all of that you're seeing in the music videos, you're hearing that in the songs, even though my dad's no longer there. In my mind, he's still there and we're still going on these adventures and all these amazing people that I've lost in my mind we're still on this adventure together and I think a lot of people uh, you know sometimes it just need a little nudge and if I can do that with my music or by uh, performing somewhere for free or uh, you know doing anything that I can do to help them that's kind of my mission because I don't really need money or fame or uh, anything like that because that's I'm not gonna take that with me in the grave so It depends on your personality. For me, I would, but you know, life is already quite a, quite a struggle. That's kind of where I, where I get my satisfaction from. You know, to seeing someone else smile. I sometimes I stand at this huge stage and I look into the crowd and I literally sometimes just focus on one person. I see one guy standing there, you know, and I just see him smile and I see his eyes light up whenever I play a track and I see that it means something to him. Same with all the guys on my label who's been, you know, trying to get music out for years. Nobody really heard them. I tried to mentor them. Or with my clothing line, it's like, they're always telling me you need to make it more expensive. You need to, you know, so you can make more money. For me, it's like, I need to be, you know, on the margins so that I'm able to survive with the clothing line. I keep making more and more and more. So I can make more people happy. And I think that's my mentality, but I don't really know. I don't have time to spend a lot of money because I'm always busy. So I don't really own a car. I only just recently bought a house. Um, and I think, you know, I, I own one pair of shoes. <laughs> and when they're done, I throw them away. And when I travel, I bring one pair. I only travel with hand luggage. I try to, even though a lot of people may see me as differently, but that's, I try not to attach myself to um, physical things too much. And uh, I think that's my choice, but I think maybe other people they like driving a Lamborghini or they like, you know, having all this, you know, crazy lifestyle surrounded by drugs and women and uh, <laughs> that's great too, but that's not my choice, uh, but I won't judge anyone. I think at the end of the day, you will be judged when you're up there and if you can look at yourself in the mirror and, you know, smile back at the person you see, then you, you've done the right thing. Yeah, I mean, for me, again, like, um, I try to look everything at, like, from a practical point of view as much as a creative point of view. Um, that's the same way I started making my music. I was like, there's not really any music that you can play, that you can dance to in a club, and you can listen to in a giant stadium. So that's how I came up, you know, with my version of Future House. And um, it's the same with the clothing. I was, like, traveling. I was like, I don't want to check in my baggage, so I need to have clothes that don't wrinkle. Uh, have double zippers, two inner pockets, so I could put my passport here and my wallet there. And all these little details started unfolding and I was like, I want to customize it. So I have the, like these things that I can click on so I can change things up and take things off. And just, I had a jacket at one point where I was like, oh, I'm doing a two week tour, what do I do? So I just thought like, okay, I'm gonna just create like eight different backsides, which are this thin, that I can just click off and click on so it looks like I have different jackets and that's how the clothing line started um, and I guess it just kind of blew up from there and now it's like a company in itself and I'm it's crazy you know because I wanted to be creative and now I have to be a businessman and I have to you know every day I'm just sitting at a table looking at all these decisions and it's a it's a luxury and it's sometimes you know it can give you pressure but my vision is still the same from when I was a kid you know that nine-year-old kid thinking like all I want to do is you know help people and hopefully I will make people smile at some point in my life 
I think everything takes away time, you know, like um, ambition takes away time in general. But anything, like, you know, you're never at the, as pure as you want to be. Like, you're always influenced by everything that's happening. Or I'm influenced by the record that's getting played before me now because that's influencing people on the dance floor. And, you know, when you hear other artists that are not as innovative, they keep playing other people's hits and they, you know, keep doing the same tricks. Uh, that really sometimes demotivates me. I'm like, fuck, you know, okay, be original, try something new. But then I realize that's not... You know, not every artist is like that, and I try not to let it demotivate me, but uh, it's tough at times. And it's the same thing with business, you know, you can get very demotivated with politics. In the, you know, in the dancing there are a lot of politics. Before you go on that big stage, you've, you went through a puddle of bullshit, and nobody's going to give you a chance out of nowhere, you know, you need to earn it. And that's, for some people that's easier than other people. And I think, you know, politics and business kill a lot of creativity. I have a lot of friends who are super talented. They gave up, you know, they went on and did other things and they, um, yeah, they made other life choices because they couldn't take it anymore. And yeah, I wake up every day like sick of politics and business, but I decided I won't let it get me down. And I decided I trained myself into being a good businessman <laughs> as much as that, you know, I, try to be a good artist in every little detail of what I do and I think it's connected and sure I think I got screwed over maybe you know over 25 times in my life I lost millions uh, you know a lot of people took advantage of me but my you know the one thing I try to remember is not to let that get me down because if that happens then that will influence my creativity and then you know everything else will stop and uh, that's been the hardest challenge for me in my life, to let that go. And the funny thing is that all of those people now, I come across them and they're all like three steps below. They all, you know, they were at the top, but they all slowly fell down. And I think, you know, in the end, I still have belief that karma, you know, it will get them. And I think it's all about doing things, doing good things for good people without, you know, having the expectation of other people seeing what you're doing. You should just do it because you can do it. And I think that's the crux of, you know, having a successful life, hopefully. Ooh, something untold. I'm looking at... <laughs> uh, there are a lot of untold things, of course. I think a lot of people in this scene don't say enough, you know, they keep their opinions to themselves. Uh, but I, I'm hoping you're referring to something more personal. Yeah, it can be something from way back or something so recent that you haven't had the time to say it. Or, ooh, whatever. I'm, I'm just like a, a bunch of stuff shooting through my mind, but I'm like, <laughs> what will I not regret saying? Um, you know, I don't know. It's actually... I might be in love right now. That might be something. But... Um, no, for real, I think a lot, a lot of people don't know that I used to uh, compete in the World Champion, the European Championships, uh, BMX. Oh, you, really? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that, and I researched you a lot, so... Yeah, it's not, it's not written down anywhere, because, you know, the thing was, with that, the funny thing was, actually, it wasn't that funny. I, I always had, like, I have two brothers, two older brothers, and they were always better at everything than me. <laughs> so my brother was like, he was like, European Champion. You know, he was like, uh, he was second in the world championships. So for me, it was like, hey, I would compete in these uh, races and I would, you know, become like eighth in the World Cup final, which is not bad at all, you know, but considering, but um, it's very far from being legendary, like my brother. So uh, I think I ne that's why I never spoke about it because it never felt like I, you know, I was as good as he was. And I think, um, I think that kind of is what life is. You always compare yourself to others. Um, and I think you have to compare yourself to yourself. Like, is what I'm doing right now better than what I did yesterday? That means, you know, I win. I think if you learn that, then, uh, yeah, you're the boss. Yeah, the only, it, it doesn't matter what place you come, who you finish. If you won a battle against yourself, then that's yeah. a win. Because you think about it, it's very weird. Like, you're. When I sit in the studio by myself, I'm like, 
sometimes I get very down when somebody has an opinion that, you know, um, that's false or sometimes it's true and I'm like, yeah, shit, I suck, you're right. But then you're sitting there between those four walls and you're like, you're looking, there's no one there. You're like, what does it really matter? <laughs> you know, how am I able to just shake this off? And I think a lot of people take opinions from other people too seriously. And I don't understand why all these people want to have their opinions on everything. So um, that's why sometimes I don't tell things. Because uh, there are other people that are much better at, at BMX than I was. But that is a little untold story for you. Shoot!